So hey, it's Rob. I'm out in the car today because it's a fairly warm day in the very, very tail end of winter. The dogs are here with me and they are barking at anything and everything, so now we're about to get interrupted. I've already been through this several times. Um, anyway, uh, back on Christmas Day, somebody broke in and stole my Apple CarPlay interface. Uh, if you don't know what they look like, it's this. It's a little USB interface that connects to the, uh, the computer. So they call it CarPlay. Uh, Android has something else for it, but it's the same interface. I've got an Android phone, so I plug my Android phone in. I can access Google Maps and all of that fun stuff. But a uh, guy broke in, and um, in 30 seconds, he had this uninstalled and taken out. Unfortunately, when he took it out, he also took out the power wiring for my dash cam and broke off the, uh, the adapter, so all I had left was the long cable. Uh, so, what I ended up doing was making a an adapter for it. <clears throat> and a power supply. So that I could wire this up permanently instead of having it plug into the cigarette lighter, I could actually have this in the car and have the wiring be invisible to anyone else. That way it uh, wouldn't be broken when someone came in and tried to steal something again. Because I'm sure that's bound to happen. Now one of the other things that I found when I got back into the car and looked was this uh, seven and a half amp fuse that looks like it had been pulled out of something. Now I haven't figured out where this came from. I don't know if this was something that was left over from something else that I just didn't uh, see before but I'm suspicious that the guy who came in and stole the uh, um, stole the, the USB interface, pulled a fuse out of somewhere. But if he did, I'm darned if I can figure out where, because the fuse panel that's inside the car is over on the passenger side on the floor, and that was sealed up completely. So, it, I mean, usually if someone was going to come in and in 30 seconds, bang, they're going to do that. They're not going to bother putting the cover back on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my handy dandy little blue driver uh, OBD scanner to hook up and see if I've got readings on all of my computers on all the uh, accessible parts that are in the car so this is uh, this is kind of a fun part right now I've got it scanning all the modules. Piper, hush! Piper, hush! It takes a long time to scan through all the modules. <laughs> Alright, I brought you inside because I was getting driven nuts by uh, having the door open while it's doing the scanning. We're at about 80% right now. This takes a few minutes to go through and uh, have the results fairly soon, I hope. Alright, made it through the, uh, through the code reports and I got no codes. Zero codes reported. That's a pretty good indication that that fuse did not come from the system, that it came from somewhere else. I'm not entirely sure why, but who the heck knows? You know, maybe it was something the guy brought with him and dropped on the in the process or whatever. But um, anyway, that's a good indication that there's nothing wrong with the with the computers in the car and everything is going well. I, it's very cool to have no codes. I mean, that's that's really kind of nice. All right, well. Okay, to give you an idea, this is the dash cam. Uh, I can't remember the model of it right now, but I've been pretty happy with it. It's got this suction cup mount, and it's got this USB plug that supplies the power. And right now I've got it run up around here, down along the sides, tucked in. It goes down over there, comes underneath here, and there's a little loop down there, and I've got it so that it comes back to this, whoops, this connector up here. Now what I want to do is I want to run it under the dashboard um, and to come up over here somewhere. I figure if I can tap into this 12 volt power or there's another auxiliary one way down in the bottom here that I can get to and hopefully that will provide enough power for it. Now right now I've got 
the you can kind of see the space where the old one went here, this nice and empty thing. Uh, I do have a temporary unit in place that's plugged in, but you know there's no bezel or anything. The guy took the whole bezel, bastard. Um, this one is the wrong model, and it causes an error when it, uh, or sometimes it causes an error when I turn the car on. Um, but I have the real one, and I have the bezel, and I'm going to be doing a little bit extra um, in here to. Now I'm going to be adding a, a super secret switch for something else entirely, and I'll uh, I'll probably clue you in on that a little bit as I get going with it. So you can see a little bit down in here. There is this cigarette lighter plug, and this is the access for the uh, CarPlay unit. You can see the, uh, the temporary one I've got in there, and I want to try and get some access down into that hole, but uh, I can't see in there right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, camera for the phone, put it in camera mode, flip it around here, and see if I can get any... There's probably not enough light. Let me see if I can turn the light on. Not a lot of light. All right. Well, I got some footage, so I'll have a look at it when I get back. I still have to figure out how to route all the wiring through here, what I need to take off in order to get access to what I need to. But, you know, we'll take it from there. See how it goes. Probably won't be doing much more on this today. Piper is very upset that I am on this side of the fence and she is on that side. So hey, it's Rob. And, and Isis. And Piper. So hey, it's Rob. And I'm in the car today because it's a relatively warm day. The dogs are outside with me and they're barking at anything and everything. So Just like that. Thank you, Piper. As soon as I turn the camera off, they stop barking. Turn it on, they start. Dogs! Piper! Hush!